Released in Japan on December 14th, 2017 and the rest of the world on January 19th, 2018 for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita, we have Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Hacker's Memory, or Hacker's Memory which I'll call it for short. Based off the Digimon Virtual Pets which came out in 1997 after the success of the Tamagotchi, Digimon is now a franchise consisting of the Virtual Pets, multiple anime series and movies, and a variety of games. Developed by Media Vision and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment, the game serves as a sequel to Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth which was released in Japan in 2015 and worldwide in 2016, which my co-host 16-Bit reviewed. Much like Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, which I'll shorten to Cyber Sleuth from now on, Hacker's Memory is a third-person turn-based RPG in which you raise, train and battle Digimon. I also just realised that I just described Pokemon in that sense too, but that should give you an idea on what to expect, though in Digimon's case you can have up to 3 Digimon out at a time, and have up to 11 with you. In Hacker's Memory you play the role of a young man named Keisuke Amazawa, though you can change his first name if you wish. Keisuke had recently fallen victim to having his account for the online network service Eden stolen. While he had a friend set up a temporary account for him, Keisuke was labelled as a hacker because of this and as a result he stopped going to school. After agreeing to meet at the Digimon market which is frequented by other hackers with his friend Yu, Keisuke chooses to go by himself as he didn't want to get his friend involved. After purchasing his first Digimon and causing a fight by wanting the owner to release the other Digimon, Keisuke catches the attention of Yuji Mishima, the leader of the hacking team Hudi. Ironic to what he's been labelled as, Keisuke decides to join Hudi as a hacker as they go around using their hacking skills for good and to find out who stole his account. While I did say the game was a sequel to Cyber Sleuth, the story for Hacker's Memory actually runs parallel to Cyber Sleuth, and as such you'll see characters and events from Cyber Sleuth appearing while Keisuke works for Hudi. You can even import your data from Cyber Sleuth for some additional items, access to the Digivolutions that you've unlocked in it, and for some reason your overall playtime. But is this game any good? Find out in... The Good. Personally, I found the story of the game to be quite refreshing. While it runs parallel to the events of Cyber Sleuth, you don't necessarily need to have finished Cyber Sleuth or even play it to enjoy Hacker's Memory, though it is recommended for the best experience. Plot points from the main story of Cyber Sleuth do appear from time to time, and I don't feel that they were shoehorned in just to remind you that Cyber Sleuth is happening too. And you can visit the colourful worlds of Eden or explore the real life locations in Tokyo, such as Akihabara, Nakano, and Ikebukuro, where the internet cafe Hudi operates from is located. Characters from Cyber Sleuth make an appearance in Hacker's Memory too, and you get to see a few things from different perspectives, such as how the hacking team Zaxxon is portrayed in contrast to Cyber Sleuth or what some of the characters from Cyber Sleuth are up to at certain points of the game. To add to that, I found myself liking the cast of Hacker's Memory, especially your fellow hacker Chitose who I felt wins the award for best supporting character in the game. The game also adds locations from Cyber Sleuth as well as some new places with the most notable one being under Kowloon. Hacker's Memory does an excellent job of telling the story that happened more or less behind the scenes of Cyber Sleuth and making it accessible to people who have played it or newcomers alike. As well as a new story, the game also introduces some new features such as domination battles and territory capture. Domination battles pits you and two allies against another team of three, where you must capture points and battle one another. Sometimes you have to get a certain amount of points, and other times you need to get a certain amount of points within a certain number of moves. In territory capture, you and one ally go around capturing parts of the map shown by the respective hacking team's logo. In all cases of territory capture, your team faces a handicap, whether it's lowered attack, to more annoying ones such as having the entire party in panic or confused, until all the areas are captured. Once all the areas are captured, the enemy team will then be subjected to the same handicap which had plagued you. You can also befriend and get closer to your partners as well over the course of three special events in which they reward you with items. Requests also return in the form of message board missions which range from humorous and light-hearted missions such as chasing a mascot around or discovering the source of a digital smell to more serious missions and even some spooky ones such as talking to a mascot or the kid with no face. The game also expands on the amount of Digimon available bringing the total from Cyber Sleuth's 249 Digimon to a grand total of 340. Digimon raising has always been my favourite part of most Digimon games, as Digimon generally have several different forms to Digivolve into, and some of the more powerful Digimon either require multiple Digimon, special items, or for your existing Digimon to meet certain stat requirements. In most cases it's not possible to Digivolve straight to Mega, so the game encourages the player to Digivolve back and forth between forms to raise its ABI number, and Camaraderie, or CAM for short. 
ABI also enables Digimon to grow stronger, and Hacker's Memory increases the maximum amount from 100 to 200, so that you can have even more powerful Digimon. The game also features the standard rock, paper, scissors formula, with Digimon generally falling into the categories of Virus, Vaccine, and Data. Virus beats Data, Data beats Vaccine, and Vaccine beats Virus. The game also adds different element types to mix up the type matching, and to increase or decrease the damage based on whether you have the advantage or not. Some Digimon are categorised as free types, which have no obvious weaknesses or strengths. But alas, that's all I have for the good, so let's go to the stuff I didn't like in... The Bad. The Digiline feature, which allows you to talk to your Digimon and other characters, was something I liked in Cyber Sleuth. Not so much in Hacker's Memory. Every now and again, people you talk to on Digiline will ask you a question, and you can respond with one of three answers. While the humans respond to you, the Digimon do not, which is something that Cyber Sleuth handled better. Most of the time, your Digimon will quiz you, and if you answer correctly, in Cyber Sleuth they'd praise you for getting it right. In Hacker's Memory, they don't even respond back, so you don't even know if you've answered the question right or not. The game also suffers from grammatical errors and a personal pet peeve of mine, mouths being out of sync with spoken dialogue. The game also featured some censorship in the form of one of the Systemon being changed from the nun like attar of Systemon Noir in the Japanese and European releases to the Baby Blue Systemon Seal for the American release. The game's difficulty is also something I had an issue with. While Cyber Sleuth had free DLC missions in which the Digimon can easily slaughter your team, Hacker's Memory felt more like a walk in the park in comparison. The game does offer a post-game dungeon spanning 30 floors of a boss Digimon to unlock it, and then on every 10th floor. With a well-trained team which you would have no doubt spent hours upon hours of grinding to get, you'll find that the battles and bosses are nothing compared to the ones in the DLC cases for Cyber Sleuth. The AI in Domination battles can be easily exploited to make winning them significantly easier. The only trouble I had with the game was with the harder offline Colosseum matches where enemy Digimon would boost their speed and run circles around your team. Other than that, there wasn't much else for me to complain about, so it's time I give... The Opinion If you're a fan of Digimon and you really enjoyed Cyber Sleuth, then Hacker's Memory is definitely the game for you. Hell, you don't even need to have played Cyber Sleuth to enjoy the game, though it is recommended for the best experience. While it is a little disappointing that the game is a bit on the easier side and some features weren't implemented as well, I had a lot of fun sinking over 100 hours or so into the game, and I don't regret playing it until the early hours of the morning and getting told off for yawning at work after a couple of hours of sleep. I think the game would also appeal to you if you like the whole turn-based monster raising experience along the lines of Pokemon or Dragon Quest Monsters, and going forward I wouldn't mind getting more Digimon games like this. So with that, it's time for my rating. Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth, Hacker's Memory Gets. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.